Peggy 18. There's a million ways to play the game uh, in terms of blowing stuff up, meaning you can kind of not be looking to do it, but you see something that you want to blow up and you're driving along really fast, you aim the car at it and you bail and there it is. So kind of everything's a weapon. And then there's also weapons. For me, it was always about like, how ridiculous can I go? So I build something kind of big and I'm like, eh, a little more. I'm like, okay. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna just dial this up to like 30 and see what happens on a 10 scale. And like, perfect. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, let's see if we can maintain that for the whole game. Uh, and we have, so that's awesome. You know, we're a part of a, a section of games that have been focused on next gen since the beginning. And this allows us to do things that maybe the crossover titles weren't able to do up front. I mean, games like Uncharted is obviously amazing in, in how they script these sequences, but it's, of course, entirely pre-designed and, and canned. We try to avoid canned experience as much as possible, so it's all based on cause and effect. The, the world feels more reactive to what you do. It's not just one explosion. You, know, you get this shockwave, you get signs falling, you get people running away, you get kind of things burning and it feels more alive. We noticed early on that when things blew up, the little pieces would fly just into the stratosphere. And um, so we changed to a pressure-based explosion algorithm. So now when things explode, it's kind of more like a real explosion and things follow a shock wave outwards. So you get more of this kind of debris sort of spraying. And frequently, some of the larger bits you can then interact with afterwards use those pieces to, you know, sort of dual tether them into other things and, you know, it's a playground. That seems to be one of the big, like, challenges that we face isn't even so much how do you blow something up. It's easy to blow something up. It's what happens when you blow it up and why it blows up. And, like, you know, if, if you have something that's moving very fast and colliding with the surface, does it blow up under those circumstances? And we have to figure out, you know, how and when and why. Because yeah, if you're working on a school bus and you have to think about like, well, what if that school bus was in the air flying into a mountain? What, what would that, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. we have to think about that, you know, because it's that kind of game. I think one of the more spectacular things is, uh, newest is the bridge that's fully indestructible. My job is to figure out sort of what we can do feasibly. In most cases, you know, depending on where you sort of place these uh, explosives or how you explode it, uh, different pieces will sort of activate and come off. Like if I decide that um, I'm going to blow up the middle part, then the two sides, and sometimes one of them doesn't always fall. It'll just sort of sit there and hang. You know, you'll see cars kind of like, ah, <laughs> you know, driving off the edge. The vision for it was more uh, taken from movies. So we wanted it to be a bit more spectacular. One of the challenges that we've run into, which is an interesting challenge to have, is making too much stuff too awesome. We have to take some things and be like, all right, well, so when you kick this can, it's not going to be an atom explosion. It's going to, you know, it's just going to maybe a small gas bomb fireball. And then well, we have done a few things that have make no sense, but it's OK. But that's it's true. Easier. Yeah, there is, there is some of that. Yeah. So. Sure, it's not the most realistic thing in the world but sometimes realism can be left for reality. And when I'm playing a game, I wanna sometimes be surreal. And the game Just Cause is kind of about that. It's a guy with a grapple hook on his arm that can do it without it detaching his arm from his body. Doing it too realistically would perhaps be a bit dull. So we tried to amp it up just a bit. The vehicle team really came up yeah. with an idea to change the way destruction works. We spent more time on the fidelity of vehicle destruction. So instead of just doing deformation, which is really cool, uh, they actually added things like hinged parts on it. So you actually get the side view mirror hanging off the side. It seems like a small detail, but when you're driving around and smashing into a wall, you actually get that amazing return of, you know, it, it gives life to the vehicle. For the most part, our game is about movement and that traversal space, so the destruction is a, a joyful response, a reactivity in the world. 